Uh, we've asked uh, Doug Meredith, the High Council in Central State, if he'll offer a word of prayer for us. And I'll do this in the in Pledge of Allegiance. Would you all stand, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You see this, thank you. Mayor, Councilman, City, citizens, and guests, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As we gather before thee in this very living space, in the house of the council, we ask for thy guidance and for thy inspiration as the mayor and the council members discuss matters pertaining to the we are very much aware of the COVID pandemic and the grasp it has on many people in our community. We ask for the blessing and comfort to be with them. We ask thee to help all of us reduce anxiety, those that have related to quarantine. We pray, Father, that thou uh, wilt grant us the civic virtues of curiosity, creativity, and share as we address matters pertaining to the city and the citizens there. We pray, Father, that we will be guided by the and that we will do our utmost to be more Thank you, uh, just as a just as a reminder, these are new microphones, and so I think when you're So, so And we'll and we'll consider we'll consider somebody with an opposing view on the same subject as we go along. I hope that's clear. So with that, we will open this to a public comment time. Uh, and you're welcome to come up. And please give your name and your bountiful address. Hello, my name is Boone Hewish. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and I live on Woodmore Drive. Um, so I am here representing the skate community of Bountiful um, and we are here advocating the construction of a skate park in Bountiful. Why you may ask? Because it is a positive addition to cities all, um, across, all across the world. It provides a safe and legal place for skaters, bikers, scooters, rollerbladers and roller skaters which if you are not aware of this, there is actually a very large community of all of those people in Bountiful. Um, they are used by, skate parks are used by people of all age groups, genders, and people of different socioeconomic backgrounds. There may be three, there are three big problems that we may face um, in building a skate park here in Bountiful, which are the place, the funding, and the people. But these problems are not insurmountable. 
We as a skate community believe that our interests are in line with the interests of you guys as a city government, um, which are creating a safe and desirable community that people want to move to and visit. Um, and so building a skate park would do that by increasing home ownership and occupancy, um, which also increases the tax base and also increases the usage of uh, local businesses, goods of local businesses. Skating is not a fringe activity. It is actually a mainstream activity that, as I mentioned before, there is a very large um, scene here in Bountiful. Um, and also we've been looking at viable options and we have thought of two. One, the city already owns. Um, it is, they are the Western unused acres of Tolman Park um, on the west, the northwest corner behind the, like sandwiched between the two baseball. Uh, fields and then the other would be the purchase of Washington Elementary through a bond. I understand that the purchase of Washington Elementary would require a bond, which means that tax, uh, which would mean minimally increasing taxes. The unfortunate thing is good things are not free, but fortunately you have a room full of allies that will advocate and campaign for the passage of this bond. Um, as long as a multi-use park, not just, not just solely a skate park, but a multi-use park including a skate park is promised. In Bountiful City, very few opportunities like this remain. Well, Dune, I think you said it very well. Thank you. Ron Mortensen. Uh, first of all, I'd request that public hearings be properly noticed and that they be held at the time that they are noticed not two to three hours after the notice time has happened two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Second of all, I'd remind the council that the Bountiful Water Department does not serve all of the Bountiful residents. People that below 2600 South are serviced by the South Davis Water District. And so when you forgive a grant or a loan to the Bountiful Water District out of money from the landfill, which we all pay into. You're benefiting people of a certain part of the city, but not the entire city. So I'd encourage you to remember that in the future. And that was a $2.5 million loan forgiveness. So that was a huge chunk of money. And the taxpayers down in the south end of the city didn't benefit any from that. I'd also strongly recommend that Utopia's request for $1.3 million from the CARES Act be rejected. And if you're going to go with Utopia on certain things, I'd request that they be put on equal footing with the commercial carriers who are paying taxes to the community and supporting the community. And finally, if you're spending money on Y2 analytics to do a survey to get a predetermined result, that is not a proper use of taxpayer money. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Okay. My name, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Kevin O'Connell. I live on 3616 South Davis Boulevard. Uh, for the second time in two years, they've managed to set an area around my home on fire. Two years ago, it was farther away. This year, it was 15 feet from my walls. Um, there's signs up on Davis Boulevard, but the way they place the signs, they should have had them on the west side of the road. They put them on the east side of the road. So people feel they can just come up there and set off whatever they want, whenever they want. It's tinder dry up there. My house is surrounded by Davis County water retention. And then there's more across the street. I mean, it's all the way around my home. And I feel the boundaries need to go down to Orchard Drive. There's just too much open area. And, you know, I feel sooner or later, somebody's gonna get hurt because of this. You know, I've had two years where I've been petrified. I was out there the night of July 3rd, and I was just beyond upset. And a lot of my neighbors are here. They're very upset. I've talked with the chief, and I'm not sure who gets to make that decision. 
I was told one way the chief has that decision. The chief, I think, says both the city council and the mayor and the chief get to make the final decision where the boundaries are. I'd like to know who gets to make that actual decision. And uh, I'm just very unhappy the way this has happened. And like I say, people just seem to think they can just come up there and shoot off whatever they want. And the signs are in the wrong place. So I feel something definitely needs to be done about this. I have a disabled child and Excuse me. I don't want him to get hurt. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Well, at the at the end, we'll have the chief uh, maybe make a statement about uh, about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Next. Yeah. There. Jake uh, Curling. Would you kind of talk up there close, if you would, please? That can you hear me now? <laughs> That's better. I get eshe yekodo nenshno hasi. My name's Curling Nakai Pfeiffer, and I live up on uh, Mill Millcrest Circle and Bountiful here. And I just want to give uh, a point of view from our Native American people as far as those that live in this area about the bountiful mascot being turned into something else other than the so-called brave or whatever uh, mascot usage that the high school does um, have. I just want to let people know that we as Native Americans are not um, quite, I, I guess you can say happy or whatever, not happy with the things as far as how people portray us in America, especially. <laughs> um, we, we just want to state that the things such as the feathers represent um, people who went to war, that's who the feathers are usually given to, or uh, of different um, honoring someone or whatever. And uh, it's not just a feather that just falls from the sky, so to speak, but it's, uh, it represents between you and deity as well. And so I just want to people to understand these things. It's not just for a, a joking matter. And that's how I feel like mascots are represent. So just please Thank understand, be willing to open your mind and listen to us. Thank you, Colleen. Appreciate it. Any others? Please. My name is Alan Clemens. I live at 27 Bountiful Boulevard. I was uh, listening on the Zoom meeting outside to maintain social distancing. So um, I know Boone has already spoken about the, the skateboard park, but um, you know, I, I'm a resident near the detention basin that they've skateboarded at for years. Um, I think that, you know, giving anybody, anything fun to do in a town is a good thing to do. So I just, I wanted to propose that we could find even just something temporary. I'm, I'm in construction. Uh, I know that going through cities and funding, uh, Boone may be a grandpa before we get it approved. Um, so, <laughs> and any boy skating right now will be college graduated at least. So, um, you know, it, trying to find them a good place with some parking um, that won't disturb the you know, surrounding neighbors. I've never had a problem with it, but I'm sure some people have. So I don't know, the police station has a big parking lot. The uh, library doesn't have a lot of people anymore that go to it as much. But if we could find them a temporary area, 
Um, I'm the president of Stout Building Contractors. I would help pledge in-kind donations of $10,000 to help construct them a temporary skate park in, in that parking lot. Um, let's find them an area, let it get going, and you guys can see their attendance and then start bonding and funding. But let's find them a location here. Corey Haddock at Parks and Rec, he's open for discussion. Um, we've got an inline skate ribbon for the, the winner. Let's have a skate park year round. Anyway, thank you. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. With that, uh, our public comment time is done. We appreciate all of you that came. I hope that you, I hope that uh, you felt like you could be heard here today. Um, with that, we'll all look for uh, for a uh, approval of minutes of the previous meeting held on June fourteenth, twenty twenty. Thank you, a second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mayor, pardon, yes, sir. Me, pardon the interruption. Did you want to have Chief Bassett oh, yes, answer please. the question oh, about- Thanks, uh, Chief. I almost for, forgot about it. Thank you, please. Fireworks, thanks. Thanks. Fireworks, I think we're all interested in this, so. Yeah, the way, um, when we evaluate the firework restrictions, uh, we follow uh, the state statute that is actually handed down and give, gives us the description area or the authority to make those restrictions. Um, every year we evaluate the mountain and the hillside. And as we, uh, we as I determine my, myself and our fire marshal, we evaluate those needs. We talk to our state forester or our state uh, fire prevention officer from the state who serves Davis County, our fire warden. <laughs> And then uh, we also, I also work with Chief Ross because the police department has the enforcement side of it. And as we uh, collectively work and make a plan, and uh, once we determine the boundary of the firework restriction, then that is brought to the council for approval. So that's how that process works. Um, the state law does have um, guidelines or actual actions that tells us what we can and what we, what we cannot, um, uh, you know, impact within the cities. So that's how that process works. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, just, I wanna make sure that we answered part of the question too, and I, I apologize, I got distracted for a second. After you make the recommendation, the city council adopts the boundaries, correct? Correct. And, um, and so the answer, I guess, to the question is it really is both. It requires both a recommendation by the fire chief. We mm -hmm. cannot take action without a recommendation by the fire chief. Correct. And you can't implement a border without action by the elected official. Correct. So both of us jointly, you know, create that yeah. restriction area. Okay. Could, could I ask maybe one more question that Please. I know has come Please, up Gary. in some of the comments about sure. this? That maybe I can ask Chief Ross or Chief Bass to answer. The, the boundary line that we have in Bountiful, um, where it starts in North Salt Lake and where it ends at the center of a boundary, why does, I know the answer, but could you explain to the public why, and to the council, why we pick that particular line? Sure, the restriction in the state law um, gives us only three categories to restrict. Um, it has to be uh, in what we call the wildland urban interface or there has to be a series of fires over five years, but it has to be a minimum of two. Uh, in the case where we had the incident on Davis Boulevard uh, just uh, two weeks ago during the July 3rd, that creates their second event. So we will be looking at a different restriction in that part of the city uh, next year. So the, the law says uh, we have to look at the last five years. And if there's a minimum of, if there's at least two events, then we have the authority to restrict a certain area that doesn't qualify under the state law. So in their case, we will have a different, we'll be looking at a different area in that south part of the town. Um, the reason why it, it goes along Davis Boulevard and then it, it makes a jog across different roads is one of the requirements of the restriction mandates that there's a clear line of definition so there, the public has to have a clear understanding through the roadways, um, through significant mile or significant um, 
what am I trying to say? Landmarks. Landmarks, thank you, that are in the, in the communities that people can easily understand and recognize. So um, we, we travel that across Davis. Um, and I will say, I, every year I get both sides of the argument. Uh, still, today, still today, today I received a phone call, people want the boulevard, want the border all the way up to Bountiful Boulevard. So we get both ends of the argument. Um, and uh, as it goes through Davis and then it goes fourth north to ninth east, as it goes down and across uh, seventh into Centerville, that's a natural barrier within the wildland area and the interface. So it travels across um, seventh in Centerville and then it goes down to Main Street over by Chase. And the reason why it does that in the south end or in Centerville is because in much like North Salt Lake, all of their roads don't connect in a straight or geographic area. They twist and turn. Um, for example, in the, you, you know, in the south end of Bountiful, some of our streets, we have three addresses. Some is it may be a Bountiful address, a North Salt Lake address or a county address. So when we look at those markers, we have to evaluate um, that we're still within the code to restrict an area. So in Centerville, it does go down to Main Street on the far north end of town. In uh, North Salt Lake, it starts at Orchard and works its way up. Thanks, Chief. Hey, so Chief, so you can restrict in an area like, like Kevin's place around there without changing it down to Orchard Boulevard, you can just take a section is that right, or does that mean that you once they meet certain criteria? Okay. So, uh, and and, uh, and what I what I tell a lot of our residents is, city councils, the fire chief cannot change what the state law requires us in in how we can restrict. Um, I get probably the most, the, the most significant question that is asked of me is why can't the city do a complete ban? And the, the city, the fire chief does not have that authority to do that. The state fire marshal's office will come down and remove that ban from the state level because you don't have the authority to do that. So I, I always encourage our residents to contact our, our local representatives there's local senators and, and express their comments because that's where we're going to get change. That's where the fireworks changed from uh, before we didn't have aerials. And the reason why we got aerials is because it was changed during the session. So. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. We appreciate you. Okay, we'll continue on with council reports and Kate, we'll start with you over there. Nothing this evening, thank you. Thanks, Kate and Chris. Mayor, I'd like to give the council an update on the Bountiful Veterans Park. And it's looking beautiful. It's looking beautiful. We're actually ahead of schedule. We put in trees, rocks, all of the water for irrigation is in. We have the timers are in. We have the electricity pulled so we can go put in lights. We're actually ahead of schedule. We expect in two weeks to put grass in. Grass. Wow. In two weeks, we expect to put grass in the Bountiful Veterans Park. Uh, we have over 2,000 residents that have submitted their names to go on the Bountiful Veterans Wall. Um, we're in the process now of moving forward with monuments, and these monuments are going to be remarkable in their architecture and their design and giving thanks to those who have served. So we're very thankful for the city support uh, we're actually going into phase two of our funding. So we're actually moving ahead of where we thought we would be at this time in raising funds and putting together this park. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, for your support. And, and drive by the park and take a look and see how it changes almost daily. Thank you. Anything else, Chris? No. No, nothing else? Uh -oh. Kendall. And thank you, and Millie. Nothing to report tonight. Thanks. Okay, Sir Richard. Uh, also nothing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we do not have a BYC report last time. We'll consider approval of expenditures greater than $1,000 paid June 8th, 15th, 
23rd, 29th of 2020 and the May 2020 financial uh, report. Are there any, any questions about the expenditures or the financial report? If not, I'll look for a motion. This isn't um, specific to these, to these um, expenses, but as I was looking through them, I was just wondering um, how many of our expenses are directly impacted because of COVID. So I was just wondering if we could have a report on that, maybe even next time or something like that. Yeah, you bet. We, we, we are actively tracking that information right. um, because that would be eligible for reimbursement of CARES Act dollars. So yeah, we'd be happy to provide a report. Thanks. Hey, hey Gary, on that line, do you want to share with those that are here our sales tax for the last few months? Is that appropriate? Um, yeah, it's appropriate. I don't know that I have the, the dollar. Not, not the dollars, but the... Yes, but surprisingly, the, our sales tax revenues have been up the last two months compared to those same months last year. Um, I haven't seen this month's collections yet. Um, it's not what we expected. And uh, so that's good. That's positive news, very positive news. Um, as I've talked to people around the state about that, a lot of that has to do with the mix of businesses that Bountiful has um, that are a little more um, recession proof than other areas. Um, so we're, we'll be very curious to see what happens as trends continue. Okay, I think everybody has a Ford truck too. I think that's part of it. <laughs> All right, um, so I'll look for, uh, I'll look for a uh, motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move that we approve the expenditures greater than $1,000 paid June 8th, 15th, 23rd, 29th, 2020, and as well as the May 2020 financial report. I'll second that. Thank you, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion passes. And we're gonna turn some time over. Oh, let's see. Is this on new thing? Number seven, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have a, we're gonna honor, we're going to honor a scout tonight. Uh, who's going to, Chief? Perfect. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is Adam Frazier. Speak right in there close so we can hear you and a little bit loudly. My name is Adam Frazier. I am in Troop 581 uh, from Bountiful, Utah. I am also with the Blue Line Ladies. The Blue Line Ladies, the Blue Line Ladies are a nonprofit organization of first responder spouses whose goal is to provide every department in the state with this important protection. I partnered with them for my Eagle Project. For my Eagle Project, I hosted a spaghetti dinner to raise money for trauma plates. Trauma plates are a protection from high power shotguns and rifles. The reason I chose to do the trauma plates is because I wanted to give back because the police officers suit the police officers do so much for us. On the day of the event, I had help from my scout troop. And now tonight I would like to present 20 trauma plates and a check for five hundred dollars for extra safety equipment to Chief Ross. Thank you. Wow. That's so awesome. Mayor, members of the council, um, I've got to tell you that back towards the end of 2019, a few months before the end of the year, a couple months, Adam approached me at the police station. He brought forward his idea of what he wanted to do. There it was not solicited by us in any way. This young man came in and said, hey, I appreciate what uh, police officers do in our community. I wanna protect you guys and I wanna do a fundraiser. Now I've heard conversations or similar, have had similar discussions in years past, good intentions, 
And uh, at the time, you're not exactly sure what it means. I know what he wanted to do, but I also knew this was not going to be easy. And uh, so we talked a little bit about it and we started into 2020. He reached out again and said, hey, I've got the spaghetti dinner planned because I told him if you move to that point, let me know so we can have some law enforcement there. I want to be there. And uh, he put on one heck of a spaghetti dinner with his scout troop, their neighbors, their ward, and it was awesome. And so I think what is great about this moment is a young man who doesn't need to be thinking about adult things that could be just playing and just be having a good time with his friends is actually thinking about his community and what can he do to strengthen the community and protect the community and your law enforcement is just a reflection of your community and at the end of the day to have that kind of a partnership and cooperation is fantastic so these plates that have been handed out to our officers all of our patrol officers and uh, they can wear it anytime they can wear it all the time if they choose to they can put it on as there because it fits into pockets as they go on calls they're more dangerous and I just really appreciate that he did all the work and committed himself to it, followed it through, and then to even have money on top of that uh, was just a surprise to me. So thank you, Adam, you are fantastic. And because of his efforts, the police department wanted to recognize him. And so uh, Adam, we. Uh, put together citizen service awards, got a patch. We've also got a coin that uh, my assistant chief Beeler has, has brought and basically says the Bountiful Police Department would like to present the citizen service award to Adam Fraser. Adam earned his Eagle Scout by raising money to purchase trauma plates for each officer within the Bountiful Police Department. Trauma plates are designed to keep officers safe in high risk situations that expose them to the threat of blunt force trauma or bullet impact. We appreciate his decision to dedicate his efforts to honor and, and protect our officers. And we thank him from the bottom of our hearts. There you go. Wow. And I do not, it's, it's easy to focus on this young man for all the right reasons, but I do not want to miss the, the blue line ladies and the efforts that they've made not only here in Bountiful they've been providing trauma plates across the Wasatch Front they are spouses of law enforcement officers they coordinated with Adam because they can help get uh, the, these plates at a reduced price and we just really appreciate their efforts and looking out for, for Bountiful so thank you. Mm -hmm. hey. So Adam, Adam, how many how many merit badges do you have there? Thirty six. That's amazing. What was your favorite one? <laughs> well, thanks again, and I think you need a four and. Now we'll turn time over to, uh, is Mr. Val Shoup here? Oh, good. And Mr. Shoup, the Executive Director, Utah Chiefs of, of Police Association, and the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Mayor Lewis, Council, City Manager, I appreciate the opportunity to be here as the Executive Director for the Utah Chiefs of Police to make a presentation to uh, Chief Ross for Chief of the Year for Mid-Size City. Uh, he was nominated by Mayor Lewis, and I want to uh, read some of the things that Mayor Lewis, I won't read the whole thing, but I would like to put some things in here because they're very pertinent. Chief Ross is the past president of the Utah Chiefs of Police Association, having served two year terms. During that time, he was and continues to be instrumental in the, in the GLEO protocols and still leads the effort to this date. He created a strong liaison between law enforcement and the legislature during his tenure and is well thought of by, his, by its members. He still has a strong voice on matters pertaining to law enforcement, including retirement, UCA, JRI, and other matters. While president of the association, he worked on changes to the association itself, 
role of the police chief, accreditation, et cetera, and increased much needed collaboration with other organizations, including the Utah Leagues of Cities and Towns. Chief Ross is, in the, is on the Utah Attorney General's Opioid Task Force and worked with Davis Behavioral Health to oversee the development of a recently opened receiving center in Davis County that gives someone struggling with health or substance abuse issues an option other than jail. At the resource center, an offender will be immediately connected to resources that can help them to finally make a course correction in their lives instead of criminal charges. Chief Ross said, law enforcement plays a critical role in dealing with people in crisis. We have to be the ones coming to people with help instead of coming to hold them accountable. We'll be the ones extending the Ollie's branch that I believe is a game changer. In this community, Chief Ross makes himself available to the residents to work with them in mitigating concerns and safety issues. He has successfully worked out high school parking issues, educated residents on safe communities and police roles, visited neighborhood meetings, barbecues, and is always a presence at a community celebration. He has a way of communicating in a concise but kind and compassionate manner. One incident in particular is described in an attached letter written by the parent of a Mueller Park Junior High School student who was at the school when the shooting occurred. He is respected in his department by the 38 officers and 24 civilians who call him chief for his integrity, fairness, having their back, making, get, <clears throat> making getting to know them a priority, being a great communicator and, and his professionalism. He's a hard worker and is detail oriented. He generally cares about others and wants them to be successful. Two of his officers have become chiefs of other departments. In his own words, when asked why he did not run for the Utah Chiefs of Police President position again, he said, there were, the, <clears throat> there were time demands and I didn't want to become too much, it, to become too much about me. That's the kind of impact he makes and the person he is. We are proud of him and the role he plays in our community. Having said that, uh, as executive director of the Chiefs Association, I've had the opportunity to work with Chief Ross for three years. And I can tell you he's a, he's a great friend and he does a great job. And in these times of turmoil that we have right now, this is the kind of gentleman you want in there to try to, to get things settled down, communicate and take care of business. So having said that, Chief Ross, can you come forward? Thank you, Chief, for all that you do for us. You gotta say something. <laughs> Thank you, Val, and I also appreciate uh, Chief Oberg from Kaysville. Um, he knows Bountiful almost as well as I do. Spent a lot of years here, and he's a great friend and mentor, so thank you. And also, I don't want to miss uh, Assistant Chief Ed Beeler because as all of you know, that work could not be done at the state level if there were not people here at the city level making sure that our citizens are not missing anything. And uh, that's what uh, Chief Beeler does in, in his role and it's been fantastic. Um, and I've got to thank those of you in front of me, Mayor, Gary, Council, Shauna, I know helped with this letter. I really appreciated you taking the time to put together a letter and send it in on my behalf. Um, I'm honored to be here. It's, I'm humbled to be here. There are a lot of really, really great chiefs in this state, 110 that are part of our association. And I think they do a lot of wonderful things every day. And to be recognized by my peers as someone that at least is in that ballpark is an honor for me. But, uh, the two things that have really made this easy is my family. My wife's here tonight <clears throat> for almost 34 years, including my full and part-time years as an officer in this community. Um, I've had the support of my family and that allows me to do extra things that take a lot of time away from them in order of 
hopefully doing the right things for our communities and our profession. Um, and that's, again, not uh, an easy, you know, it's not easy to have people gone all the time. The other part is the community itself. I love Bountiful. Next to my family and my friends, it is the closest thing to me. And, you know, I'm getting to the, the latter years and, and I know that, that uh, uh, there may not be a lot left, but it has, it has been the most rewarding city and position, not chief, but officer that I could have had. And although it didn't start out intentionally to be a bountiful police officer position, I wasn't looking for that. I wasn't looking to be an officer. It just happened to fall into place. And I've never regretted it. I've never left here. And my plan is to be here until I'm done at the end. And this will be the community that I have loved and served for my career. So thank you to everyone for supporting me and allowing me to do some of these extra things and for my department. Um, there is a lot going on today. And with change that must occur and change that's needed to occur, don't lose sight of the 38 officers that come to work here day in and day out, trying to do the right thing for the right reasons treating everybody fairly and equally. That's the culture that resides here. That's the culture that was here when I came in. And I can assure you that that is the biggest part of our conversation and has been mine as 14 years as a police chief here. So recognize that we are trying to do the right things and the best thing for a community that we love and that we respect. And the outpouring of respect that we've received, the, I've got a room, a lineup room that we can't use right now because of COVID that's just packed full of cards, emails that come in, um, posters, the food. Um, we work in a great community and, and our officers know that. And we appreciate what you do to foster that as leaders and the city manager. And uh, we hope that we're worthy of returning that. So thank you. Chief. Thank you for being here, Mr. Shoup. And uh, Chief, we're gonna have you come right back up here for our next. Oh, no, that's okay. Yes. Are, are we going to do? Hey, are we going to do a few less uh, push-ups? Or are you doing them with just one hand? <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank you, Chief. But I'll step out with some folks. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. And Ed, please. Oh, by the way, so so we have we have quite a few just purchase things. Let's be as efficient as we can at the at the podium, and uh, and this is really good timing, Ed. Looking for nine vehicles, I think this is a pretty good time to ask we, for it. We hope so. All right. Uh, thanks, Mayor and members of the council, for your service to the community. It's very much appreciated. Um, I'm here to, tonight to request the purchase of nine vehicles. Funding for the vehicles was included in our 2021 budget. The vehicles to be purchased are all 2021 Dodge Chargers assigned to the patrol division. If you'll remember last year, we couldn't buy any chargers for patrol. Um, we were able to buy one supervisor vehicle that was a, a Ford. So these are all going to patrol um, right now. They're going to be purchased from Ken Garf Dodge at the Utah State contract price of $27,316 a piece for a total of $245,844. Um, we're not 
selling, trading in, or returning any of the vehicles we have now until these all get outfitted and that type of stuff. And then we'll start to sell what we have. We're gonna need some replacements while they're all down in the shop and that type of stuff, getting the equipment installed. Um, so I would respectfully request your approval to purchase these nine vehicles in the amount of $245,844. And thank you for your consideration. If you so questions. moved. May I ask a, just oh, a quick question sure. first? Yeah. Just, this is the new, the new person question. So it's a, just a two part question. When you say that you can't use the new, the older, the new vehicles until they're outfitted with the correct equipment, do we just take the old equipment from the old vehicles and put them in? Or is that a separate line that also needs to be purchased? Both. So okay. there is some equipment that we purchase new each year, but there are some items that we're able to, um, make run through maybe two separate car rotations. Okay. Some of those will be like the overhead lights. Um, those aren't replaced every new vehicle. Um, they generally just replace the lenses that are on there so that they look nice and shiny and the, the lights shine nice. Um, but after two rotations, we'll usually replace those as well. I'll look for a second. <laughs> well, I am asking for two hundred and forty-five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ed. Um, next item, uh, Charles. Thank yes, you. Here I am. I come before you. To, uh, thank you for letting me come before you tonight. Um, we come before mm -hmm. we get a. To ask you to buy a street sweeper. The street sweeper we have is replacing one from 2011. I can't see it. The glasses are stringing up. Uh, to, we're tasked with keeping the roads clean and by the state and the federal EPA. To do this, we need to replace our old 2011 sweeper with a new model. So we requested quotes from EnviroCare about their Ravo, uh, Kate Equipment, the Johnston, which we have one similar to that, and Owen Equipment for the Elgin. After review, the truck and the warranty package, we determined that the Ravel 5 series from EnviroClean Equipment would meet the needs of the stormwater department and be the best value for the city. We have actually budgeted in $306,000 into the budget. This is gonna come in significantly lower than that in the savings for the, for the city. So staff recommends that the council approve the purchase of the Ravel 5 from EnviroClean Equipment in the amount of $240,000. So moved. Second. Uh, second from Millie. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Thank you. And your next item, Charles. The next item is for our Bountiful City Landfill. We need a larger truck out there. This is a 40-ton haul truck. It'll be used for placing the refuge from the public dumping area into the landfill phase placing cover material where we need it to cover the daily cover at the landfill, and also moving the green waste grinding from the grinding area to the composting area. This truck can haul more than double what we're currently doing. This is the 14 ton trucks that we're sending down from the street department. And quite frankly, those trucks are getting pretty old and they're in the maintenance on them. So we need a newer truck that has more capacity down at the landfill. We requested quotes from well, we had four of them here, from Rasmussen on a Terex and from Riverbend on a Bell truck and from Hanan on a John Deere equipment and Komatsu on theirs. Mm -hmm. After reviewing each one of the trucks and the warranty package that comes along with it, staff determines that the Terex TA400 meets the needs of the landfill and will be the best value for the city. Um, Significant impact. This has been budgeted in, this has been planned for for many years. It's in our 10 year capital plan. And we've put in $490,000 into the budget for this year to, to purchase this equipment. So the staff recommends the council approve the purchase of the Terex TA400 from Rasmussen Equipment in the amount of $473,575. Any questions I can answer on you? Motion to approve the purchase of the Terex TA400 for. $473,575. Thanks, Kate. Second. Thank you, Chris. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Thanks. That passes. All right. So, Char Charles, are you feeling a little nostalgic about all that dirt that's on the corner of uh, Fifth uh, South that's, and that's uh, Orchard? That's a big adjustment there. Huh? That's a big adjustment. Looking that's, that. well, that's a big adjustment. I, I suspect it would be. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, it, I'm sure something good's going to go up there. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. And we'll turn time over to, to Jared. Good evening. Thanks for your time. In the spirit of uh, efficiency, I think I'll present everything at once, if that's okay. Um, I'm not sure how long I can talk with this mask on without fainting here anyway. Um, <laughs> this is my first uh, experience wearing one, so, and uh, I'll be glad when this passes. Um, so the uh, purchases that uh, I'm bringing before you are the First is a service truck for the landfill in the amount of 66,000. This service truck will replace um, another service truck and its um, bikes expanded. It will also provide um, additional uh, service um, for some of the larger equipment that we've recently purchased, such as the pond compactor, the large haul truck, and various equipment at the landfill. Um, the service body has the capability of retrieving um, used oil as well as um, filling, um, which is an improvement from the system that we are currently using and is uh, safer uh, for those who are um, performing the service. Um, these services can't be provided on this equipment um, other than in the field because of the nature of the machinery. It can't be driven on a road. Um, without destroying the road. Um, so that is the first purchase. The second is a, a sanitation truck to replace um, a sanitation truck in the amount of 262, 428. And the third is um, two plow trucks and solders in the amount of 467, 710. And of interest, um, I've applied uh, for um, federal monies that were awarded through the Volkswagen emissions settlement through the courts. And we've been awarded uh, a, a sum over two years of 390,000 that will be um, reimbursed to us after purchase um, half this year and half next year as we purchase another garbage truck and two additional plow trucks and we have a, a contract in place with the state of Utah who is um, executing this uh, judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Any thank questions you for, from the council? Thank you for your work on getting that awesome. funding. That's really exciting. That is. Thank you. Mayor, could yes. I ask a question of Gary? Absolutely. Gary, I've noticed, I've wanted to ask this in the past, uh, when we have state contracts on vehicles, does the state then negotiate? Because usually I notice that the state contract is usually the lowest of all other bids. Has that been negotiated by the state? So what happens is the state goes through a competitive bidding process in the place of jurisdictions, and, and then they select contractors based on that bid. And then we, as political subdivisions, have the opportunity that satisfies our requirement to go get a low bid. So we just are able to go contract directly with, with those vendors that have already been selected as the low vendors. Thank you. If there are no other questions, look for a motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the approval for our, let's uh, have lost it. Number 11. Number 11. No, no, not 11. 12, 13. 13. Oh, excuse me. So, excuse no, me. 12, no, I've lost it. <laughs> is, it is it 14? Yeah. Oh, 12, 12, 13, and 14. So moved. No, no it's 11, no. 12, and 13. I'm sorry. No, it's, that, oh, oh, it's a different agenda. 12, I'm sorry. 12, 13, and 14. Jay? Yes. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Thank you. Thank you very I much. I appreciate you with that, Jared. And, uh, We'll turn some time to uh, Mr. Pierce. How are you, Jess? Good, how are you? Great, 
I appreciate the opportunity to be here. This is my actual first time to present to you guys, so appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, the first item is to replace our tree trimming aerial lift device bucket truck um, that our tree crew, internal city tree crew uses. Um, it's a 2008 Ford with a VersaLift boom on it, 60 foot working height boom. Um, we've had nothing but problems since day one with this truck. We special ordered it back in 2008 with a Caterpillar motor. Um, Caterpillar was top of the line back then, but due to the emission restrictions that got put into place, the quality suffered terribly. So we went out to Mountain States Industrial Services. Um, they can pro provide us a new truck at the state, state bid or under state bid contract. Um, we went out in February, roughly, uh, for our budget, and uh, they came back with a number of 168,000. We budgeted 185,000 for the vehicle. Typically, there's a couple add-ons um, to cover those costs. Mountain States was off by quite a bit on this one um, due to chassis prices, the tree body prices, and then due to COVID-19, some of the um, shipping costs on the large items have over doubled in cost. So. Um, due to the maintenance issue that this truck is, we feel like we should still move forward with this purchase. And we would rec staff would recommend the purchase of a new tree trimming truck um, at the cost of $195,480 for the power department. Promotion. A quick question. Um, sure. It's a little bit odd that we only have a single bid is that because mountain states is the only one in the area capable of providing a bid on a the, piece of equipment like this the reason we went single bid is because mountain states can build it under state bid contract um and what mountain states does is they actually take their cost as mountain states loan and then compare it to state bid contract and take the lower amount of the two uh, mountain states cost is actually three thousand and some change lower than state bid so to go out anywhere else, I, I don't think we're going to be anywhere near that. Six to eight months is actually really good. Um, we've been we've been being pulled roughly nine months, and we've been getting them in a year. Um, and so if we can really hit the six to eight month mark, we are we're doing very well. So question, so we're a thousand over budget. So we have a double bucket truck budgeted in this year as well um, from Altec Industries. It's supposed to show up in August. And that was one of the trucks, um, back to Richard, Mr. Higginson's question. Um, we got, kept getting told about a year time frame. Um, when it came to purchase, time to purchase that truck, they came in at 15 months. So that pushed that truck over into this current year's budget. Um, that truck should be on schedule. And then with this truck um, coming in at the higher cost, we are gonna be over budget in our capital vehicles account by $900 and some change, just shy of $1,000. But due to the maintenance problem, we feel it's worth $1,000 to, to move forward. I'd be willing to donate $1,000 if you'd come and take two trees out for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> you just sold two trees. <laughs> we, we can maybe talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Move to approve the purchase of the truck as presented. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, that uh, is approved. And your last item. Our last item is um, we went out to bid for, uh, for some boring, directional boring projects in, in the city um, roughly two and a half months ago. And what those were for was for our burned up street lights. Every spring, we typically get um, our street light wire underground goes bad due to moisture and the way it was installed. Um, when it was originally installed, direct buried wire. So we've, we've kind of changed gears. Um, we used to cut holes in the road, splice it, patch the road. Um, street department wasn't very happy with us most of the time. Um, so we've kind of changed gears there and we are installed, we've hired a contractor, a third party contractor to install new conduit, whole new system uh, from the ground up. So 
but about two and a half months ago, Americom won the bid to do uh, the boring projects for us uh, as of last year and a couple of projects that were starting this fiscal year. Um, during that time frame, we found two more burned up streetlight circuits in town that we would like to add to their list while they're here in town instead of going back out to bid and have to mobilize and that they're here working anyway. And then along with those two streetlight projects, um, we are rebuilding 3100 South and Orchard Drive, the overhead line. A lot of that is going underground and um, we need to refeed our traffic, our semaphore traffic controller at that location that wasn't in the original bid. So those three uh, combined, we would ask for the uh, approval of those three projects for Americom technology to accomplish at $60,270. So moved. Second from uh, Kendall, I think. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Perfect. And we'll turn time over to Francisco. Thank you. This is an amended preliminary and final architecture on site plan for the construction of a new multi-tenant commercial development. You should be somewhat familiar with this. Uh, City Council has already approved it. Um, however, we received a request to slightly amend that. Um, we're located at 410 South 500 West in the General Commercial District. And um, the Planning Commission did review this application last week and forwarded a positive unanimous recommendation. The changes can be uh, simply identified by comparing page 66 and uh, let's take a look. Yeah, 66 and 63, one is the original. The first one is the um, amended and the, the one on 66 is the original application uh, where in essence, the applicant found an opportunity to provide what they're calling a pocket park behind the Daniel Wood Cemetery. While at the same time, uh, the building would be slightly bigger in order for it to work out the land use authority, in this case, the uh, city council, is able to reduce setbacks for landscaping along the north, the west, and the south um, areas. As I said, uh, the planning commission uh, forwarded a positive recommendation. And um, actually, the, uh, I need to add, the uh, planning commission did add three specific conditions of approval listed on page 61 as item two, three, and four. All the other conditions are pretty much business as usual. Um, that's all I have as far as a presentation. Uh, Leslie Mascara with uh, Right Development is here and she could answer any other questions. Um, but we do recommend that you uh, review the application and approve it. Thank you, Francisco. Hi, my name is Leslie Mascara with Right Development Group. Um, a lot has occurred in the last few months. Um, we've worked very closely with staff um, and then also the planning commission to receive uh, their positive recommendation on this new layout. Um, but we actually feel like it's a much better layout and we're really excited about it um, because it does offer a lot of additional usable um, space that we didn't have on the initial um, concept plan. Um, we've included some additional landscaping in addition to some benches which actually overlook the cemetery. Um, our hope is uh, to also identify a few areas where some of our tenants um, would be able to utilize this um, usable space for some outdoor seating areas. Um, I don't have anything else, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have for me. I have just a quick question. So am I understanding correctly that page 66 is the new, the new layout? 63 is the new one. Uh, 66 is the original. This is what um, was already, oh. yeah, 66 so that is. That makes sense why my counting up of parking spaces was short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, and exactly. then that completely negates my question. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? I, I was curious um, from the description of where the planning commission thought the crosswalk should go. I was not following that on the where it would be on the back side of the, the layout. One of them is from from the parking lot on the north side towards the building. 
okay, just so like connecting the, the cemetery essentially and the building. Correct, correct. And that was simply should there be any conflict in vehicles coming up through the drive through, it gives just people crossing over the ability for cars not to block that area. That makes more sense. I was thinking and that was a very line. excellent catch by the commission. I agree. Thank you so much. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to um, approve the Daniel Wood Square located at 10, 410 South 500 West. Second. Aye. 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 Are we at a point where we can find out who the anchor tenant is for that bill? Shout out that um, we'll be able to announce it sometime in the um, next few months. But due to sure. confidentiality clauses, we can't. Sure. Oh, no worries. Thanks. That's correct. So, our inline tenant that we're currently working with is a barber shop. And then we do have a lease um, on the end cap with the drive through, and that is a national um, coffee shop. At, because of confidentiality clauses, we just can't announce it right now. But hopefully we'll be seeing it sometime soon in the next um, three, four, five months. Okay. It is exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Staff recommends the City Council review the proposed land use text amendment affecting wall signs in the hospital zone. The basic change is uh, identified on page 73. Well, we're simply requesting to remove the cap area of 64 square feet on the primary facade and 32 square feet on the um, identified um, on the secondary signs uh, with identified as the additional faces. Uh, the changes are simply listed on page 73. We, this is a uh, land use code text amendment, so it does require that we hold a public hearing and we simply recommend that um, you uh, approve it based on the attached ordinance. Um, the, the Planning Commission did have a healthy discussion on this, and uh, this is their, recommend, their recommendation, which is uh, supported by staff. Thank you. And, uh, still, the electronic sign still That is correct. Okay. Thank you. With that, Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so anyone who wishes to come, this is a public hearing. With that, we will close the public hearing and I'll look for a motion. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. About, uh, Councilman uh, Harris or, or Francisco. I was just curious about the attendance of the planning commission meeting. Were any neighbors of the hospital zone able to attend? Yes, um, we heard from residents and we heard from um, business owners. So we had a healthy discussion and I think this, this really pleases everyone. It's a great, it's, it's just a simple change um, that's perfect for what we need to do. Thanks. Thank you. And may I, may I ask a question about the planning commission meeting as well? Sure. Um, and maybe this isn't the place to ask the question, but is, can, it, and maybe I'm reading this incorrectly, but why can't each tenant have their own sign? They can. They can? Yeah. So am I reading this wrong then? Yeah, no, they can. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then there we go. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor, I need to stay out of the discussion since I own property in the hospital zone, so I will stay out of it. I, I don't know that that's completely necessary, but we'll ask Clint. Yeah, you don't have to stay out of the discussion. You just have to disclose that you're a property owner within the zone. That's it. Um, if you don't want to participate, that's fine. It, it's up to you. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to compel council. <laughs> <Simon. laughs> that's beautiful. Just kidding. I'm, I was just happy to see that the... Uh, right up here says that in the coming months there are going to be more discussions and more steps taken that will give property owners more tools to be able to revitalize their property. I'm glad that just isn't a sign issue and that we're going to be looking at uh, 
uh, more detailed help. So good. thank you for that. And I'd be happy to make a motion that we adopt ordinance 2020-07 to make this change. Second. Thank you for the second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thanks, and that passes. Um, we don't have Lloyd Cheney here. Oh, we do. Oh my gosh, you're back there in disguise. Hiding behind the mask. Yes. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. I've been hiding in the back, so I wouldn't scare anyone off. <laughs> uh, tonight, for your consideration, we have final approval of the Stone Creek Estate Subdivision Phase 1. That was the interior 19 lot portion of the uh, four phase subdivision. Rainy Homes has completed all the improvements. We've inspected it. It's ready and appropriate to be accepted by the city and we would uh, begin the, the maintenance of those improvements at this time. So my recommendation would be that you accept those improvements and authorize the final release of the bond money that's currently held by the city. Thank you. Uh, there are no, no questions. I'll look for a so motion. Moved. Thank so you, moved. Richard. Thanks. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item. Thank you. The next item is a re basically a reapproval of the Joe and Betty Eggett subdivision phase six. The subdivision was approved by the city council in May of 2019, but because of the Eggett's situation and the pandemic, they weren't able to really get started on, on the development and they're asking for an extension of the approval. And they have uh, things in line and are ready to go now. Really, we've just included the very same recommendations included with the original approval from May of 2019 and would ask that uh, you extend that approval for the agates. Thank you. Any question? Motion to approve the extension. Thank you. I'll second that, but I just want to draw attention to the significant impacts, and I'm glad that the llamas were given an opportunity to comment. Good. Thanks for that. <laughs> That's a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And your final. The final item I have for your consideration tonight is the award of a contract for storm drain installations. Uh, we felt very fortunate to have six proposals received for the proposed work. And the lowest proposal from Paragon Construction was a little bit of a surprise. This is a new company to us. Uh, they typically work in the railroad industry. So it may seem like they are a little bit out of their comfort zone in installing storm drain pipe, but after doing some research on them with, with their references and finding out the broader scope of some of the projects they worked on, uh, many of those things include utility work and require coordination with state and county governments. So um, giving you a recommendation to award this contract to them didn't seem too far out of line in my mind. Uh, two of the four references that we were able to contact gave a glowing recommendation. In fact, one of them said, don't be afraid of hiring these guys. They work in the railroad industry, which has an incredible requirement for safety protocols and a quality of work verification and performance. So these guys are very, very used to being organized. One of the other references said, they're here when they tell us they're going to be here and they're done before they tell us that they're going to be done. So I, I was very pleased to hear that. Uh, we're very pleased for the pricing that we received for these um, projects. Uh, there's, there's funding in the current fiscal year for these projects. We've also included a miscellaneous schedule. Unfortunately, it seems that we have a storm drain emergency that crops up on us occasionally. By having this miscellaneous schedule available to us, we'll be able to come up with pricing to address those kind of concerns and have that ready to roll. Uh, they're anxious to get started. And uh, I'd recommend that the council award 
this contract to them at the unit prices in their bid. Thank you. Any questions? At the time of the write-up, um, it said you'd had one one reference response. So it sounds like you've had a few more responses. I had one more. Okay. Uh, we we reached out to the four references they provided. One of them never responded. They never answered the phone. There wasn't an opportunity to leave a voicemail or anything. Uh, the other one just didn't respond. So. But you feel confident based on what you did hear back. Yeah. That's great. Their, their crews have, as a company, they don't have a lot of this kind of experience, but their individual um, crew leaders, pipe layers, these are guys who have come out of the construction industry, many of them from companies that we have hired in the past who do this kind of work. So I'm comfortable that, that they can do it. Good. Any other questions? If not, I'll look for a motion. Mayor, I motion that we approve Paragon's construction bid in the amount of five hundred forty-two thousand dollars and seven, or excuse me, five hundred forty-two thousand seven hundred fifty-nine dollars for the twenty twenty storm drain projects. Thanks, Mel. Second from Kate. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And our Thank last you. item today. Uh, Clint. Yeah, Mr. I, Drake. I know friend. we're I know we're bordering on agenda item fatigue, so I'll be brief. Um, this will be a review for some of you that were uh, part of the budget committee. This was uh, discussed uh, during the budget discussed during the budgeting process. Um, what we have here is uh, there was recent state uh, legislation that uh, requires. Um, cities to contribute to tier two public safety retirement plans. In our case, we're talking about police. Um, there's a required amount of 14% by the employer and an additional 2.27 that can be uh, contributed by the employee. Um, but the uh, state law and the IRS uh, code allows for um, employers to pick up that portion and that 2.27%, uh, which uh, staff is recommending that we do for a total of 16.27%. This applies to all current and future tier two public safety employees. Happy to answer any questions you if you have any. I, I think this is the right thing to do for the tier two employees. Um, I know it's a sometimes a budget hard thing to pick up those extra costs, but I think it's important for our ability to, to retain and attract uh, public safety employees that are, you know, of that younger vintage that would be in the tier two system. So I'm happy to make a motion that we uh, approve the, the updates to the benefits for the tier two public safety program. Thank you, Kate. Second. Second from Kendall. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mayor, could I ask a budget related question? Absolutely. Gary, if our uh, sales tax revenues are looking positive, mm -hmm. Is there a possibility we could uh, include again in our 2020 budget, 2021 budget, the uh, COLA for the city employees? What are your thoughts along those lines? Um, we can. I think what I would probably suggest if you want to do that is to look maybe quarterly. Okay. So let's look at the end of the first quarter of the fiscal year and then again at the half, halfway point and see how we're doing. Okay. I think that would be very much appreciated by the employees. I think that's a smart uh, strategy. So we'll, so I've got two things coming back with CARES Act um, update on what our direct costs have been and then we'll put on the calendar to do a review of, of revenues, um, particularly sales tax quarterly. Okay, one follow up if I could. Sure. We have uh, funds available to be distributed by the city from the CARES Act. Um, I know that other cities have programs in place already in which those funds are being distributed. What are we doing? Great question. Very, very relevant to our utopia discussion. And, yeah. and so- which, which utopia discussion is that? <laughs> The oh, you mean the, the one, one I completely missed? One of five mm -hmm. um, we are receiving 
additional guidance and I would say clarifications to guidance from the Treasury Department on what CARES Act money can be used for. One thing that has not changed is that we can use it for direct costs. And at this point, I'm, I'm estimating, I don't see Tyson, well, Tyson, about $100,000. About $100,000 in direct costs that are definitely reimbursable. Um, with recent guidance that has been given by, um, I, I would, it's counsel to this treasury department that was given to the state auditors association on a zoom call. It, it appears that we can also use it to reimburse the, our public safety salary costs. So all of the salary and, ben and benefits from our police officers from March 1st through the end of the year. We're not entirely certain. Um, it appears to be the case, but we got our best minds on it, mainly Galen, Tyson, and Clint, <laughs> who are, are gonna verify that. If, if that is indeed the case, that's kind of a, a game changer for how we could spend the money. Um, so we're waiting for some additional clarification on that before we commit funds any place. Um, I should say recommending committing funds on any place. In addition to that, we have, we have the cities in South Davis have sent out a request to some of our partner agencies like the fire district, rec district, and South Davis sewer who do not receive any CARES Act money to see if they have costs that um, we might be able to help out with. Um, all of this would be subject to you know, final council's approval of all of our cities, but we're just trying to find out what is the universe of needs that are out there. In addition to that, the county has kind of in conjunction early on with the cities that one of the eligible expense, ex, expenditures is grants to businesses, small grants. Um, it seemed to make sense that rather than having each city do its own grant program, which we still could, that the cities, um, partner with the county and the county would administer those grants. The county received a direct appropriation of, I wanna say, or will in three tranches of about $31 million. Bountiful's appropriation, if we receive all three and there's no guarantee there, um, based on the current formula, would be $3.9 million. So one option is we could do grants ourselves. Another is that we could give a portion of our funds to the county. Um, and they could distribute that to businesses. They're already doing that right now with, with the, their first tranche. And um, I'm, I, I was told by the county that the Bountiful leads the way in requests from small businesses to this point. Um, Francisco's nodding, so uh, that's another possible use. Um, and then there's the Utopia request to use CARES Act dollars for the installation of um, trunk lines essentially to our parks. Um, Clint and I are dubious that that's an allowed use. It's pretty vague and we know one thing for sure is that uh, we're on the hook um, and Roger said it too if if we spend the money on that and we um, and they determine now or in the future that it was an ineligible cost and that's part of the catch here a little more than you asked for, Richard, but. No, that's great. We, when we agreed to take the money, we agreed that we would be subject to current or future guidance on what's eligible and what isn't. And it can change. And it can change. And so we're, we're, we're trying to be very careful um, before we commit any direction. Um, I would add this too about Utopia, that if the city's interested in eventually doing um, fiber to home, there's really no benefit to the city for spending money on CARES Act um, directly because they're gonna put it in anyway. And the only thing it would do is probably reduce our take rate right. as opposed to direct cost to residents. So just something to think about. Um, so having said that, that's, those are the balls that are kind of up in the air. Um, love to get your your thoughts and feedback about it. That's why we haven't come with a recommendation yet, because um, we we just don't have a good one for you yet on how to spend the money, and we're still looking for guidance.
Mayor, Mayor, one other thing, maybe could we, we were talking about maybe having a little more discussion on concert in the park at the end of this meeting tonight. Maybe that could give some direction to Richard. Can I, can I jump in really quickly and just say one thing on that topic? If you guys want us to do concerts, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll work with the staff, we'll work with the Community Service Council, and we'll, we will figure it out. Um, so I don't want that to be an impediment if you want us to, if you want us to do it, so. Is it a use of CARES Act money? Are you talking about a like a legal and financial liability or <clears throat> I, I think everybody knows the uh, and, and you're better positioned than I am to answer what the political liabilities are, if any, um, or benefits, whatever, however you see it. Um, a legal liability, I'm not aware of anything yet that, uh, you know, that uh, organizations are being held responsible for the spread of COVID due to um, uh, gatherings, um, particularly where we're following, if, if we follow mm -hmm. government guidelines, CDC and, and governor guidelines, state guidelines, I, I, I think the risk is low. What about the liability to, to meet the permit requirements of tracing and um, size limitations? Um, we, we would just have to have additional measures in place or uh, be very careful about the way that um, it's done. It, you know, talking about, Gary had mentioned earlier, you, we're gonna have to either have a lot of volunteers and or some employee and staff time and staff um, hours dedicated to ensuring that we can, can meet all the requirements, including people being there at the events to make sure that we're following the requirements and having a plan in place if, if there's too many or um, just how, how we want to, how we're going to handle that. But if, they're outdoor concerts and there's a lot of space. Mm -hmm. If there's really a requirement that folks have to give their contact information in order to attend the concert, people aren't going to come. It's an, it's an idiotic requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we're still required to track attendance and, con and collect contact information. So even with masks and social distancing, we still have to collect contact information. So what you're saying is masks and social distancing don't work? I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the contact tracing has a couple of other layer on it. Um, I would like to have concerts if possible because I think it's a good thing. But to Richard's point, I don't know that people, I guess it's going to have a sign up ticket if you go to. Then you almost have to set up fences with a point of entry to check the tickets so that people who didn't think and just thought, hey, it's yeah. a Friday night, I'm going to show up. You know, you'll have to have a staff person to handle those people who yeah. didn't pre-register for a free ticket and submit their contact information. So then we're herding people through narrow gates, like the one open door at the grocery store to keep us safer by being closer. It just seems onerous to me. And at a time when COVID's going up, it's, we're here in mid-July. I just don't think we should worry about it this summer. 
is my opinion. Is it still going up? Yes. The hospital um, utilization is up and the case counts are up. On which day average? On your seven day average, which is one that probably matters the most. Yeah, and we're not we're not making any comments on whether or not the the guidelines and the regulations are effective or not. But when you ask the question of liability, um, the only the only answer I can give to ensure that we our our risk is low is to follow the guidelines. Sure. So this you know, I really, I really am for the concerts. No, I don't, I don't think we should. If there's a way to, well, yes. I know people gather in space somewhere. Yes. Are you comfortable with that? I mean, that's definitely a vote. And, and, and there are ways we can figure this out. I mean, we can do circles and you just, as soon as somebody sits in a circle, the volunteer goes and gets their contact information. I mean, it's, there are things that we can do. Um, so if that's the direction. Look, I, I, I think, uh, Nephi is having a rodeo here pretty soon. They're, they might have some, I mean, that might, might be able to learn some things from that. That's a, that's a not only a ticketed item, a very sought after ticketed item. So I'm sure they've got contact info on ticket purchase, I would guess. Can I make a, a request to the council and staff? Um, the vote we just took, can that apply towards brainstorming on how we could possibly pull this off? And Gary, if you could get back with us and see if there's a feasible way that we could get it done. And if the Best Minds and Bountiful's uh, staff can't come up with a way that it would work effectively, then let's visit about it again. Is that okay? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. We'll, we'll plan to do, we'll plan to take some time on the 28th. Can I ask? You okay with that? Yes. Can I ask, can I ask a couple of um, scheduling and housekeeping questions, Mayor, before we adjourn. Is that okay? So looking ahead to the 28th, um, I will be out of town and Chief Ross will be out of town. Um, but we have tentatively scheduled to have the council um, make a decision on deer um, on that night. Tom is in it and Brock, Brock is, he may or may not be in town. So Tom had his shoulder surgery. Brock has had knee surgery. Um, we don't have to do it that night. We can postpone it, but we probably will postpone it till the end of August at that point because of um, the decisions that are gonna need to be made on the 11th regarding the bond. So my question is, do you want us to go ahead and have you guys make a decision on deer on the 28th or would you like to postpone that? Well, he's certainly our resident um, deer Anger whisperer. <laughs> no. Well, other than other than he he's not up to speed on the deer program like Jesus. What's the survey? I'm happy. I'm happy to wait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do we have do we have any idea on the survey that's been on the website where so, so the survey's done it was canceled. it was after two weeks we completed it and we were just we're just gonna get the information to you okay. prior to the meeting. We're not gonna post the survey results until after you make a decision. Um, we, we think we think it's really important that you read the comments and, and in particular. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not a scientific survey, we don't want the public to think that it's somehow a popularity contest or something. And 
force your hands unless you direct us to. We weren't planning on publishing the results. If you put it in a packet, it'll become public. Well, we aren't going to put it in a packet. I mean, it would be public the minute we emailed it. But my, my point is we're not planning to post it, any results, until after the decision, and then it'll be summary results. We're not going to let everybody see everybody comments. The point of the survey was for you to make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do something different. I just wanted to sort of telegraph what staff was thinking about this mm -hmm. to not make it any more painful than it, it likely is going to be. It's not a public hearing schedule at the end of August. Um, we've we've more than satisfied any desire, I think, on your part to get public input. You're not going to hear anything different at a public meeting. Can I ask one more question about this? Was it on high response rate? What's that? Was it a high response rate? It was a very high response rate. Yeah. And, um, and there was a lot of um, politicking on social media to go fill out the survey. So, I mean, that's the, the one thing with those surveys, our Qualtrics surveys is, you know, they're not, they're not scientifically valid, but they are good for getting comments. Um, the second and last one is just related to the other survey that we're pursuing right now. The uh, focus groups for the, the geo bond were finished last week. And there's a memo of the observations of the Y2 folks that they've sent to me that I'd like to send to you tonight. And they want to do, they want to send the questionnaires out Thursday and, and they sent me a draft this afternoon of the questions, but it's, it's a rough draft. Um, I'd like to send those out to the, those questions out to you um, late tonight or early morning, but I've, I need probably your comments back. I doubt not kind of, I'm going to need your comments back if you have any um, by noon on Wednesday, uh, noon tomorrow. So I'm sorry for the turnaround time, but Y2 is trying to crank out stuff so we can get surveys. But I'd like to get both those documents in your hands and then have comments back if I can by noon tomorrow. Is that, if you have any. Great. Was that an earthquake? Or was that just me? Okay. What is your dynamic question about the? I'll check the website. Utopia survey. We want to discuss oh. their offer to do a survey. Here, my recommendation on that is, um, we shouldn't do any additional surveying or um, potentially confusing the public about priorities until after you know what you're going to do with the geo bond. So my other. I guess the my internet connectivity boost. The only the only question I'd have for the council on that one is we have a lot of irons in the fire and it all of this takes a lot of time. And if we want to prioritize that, we're gonna to have to take some of the other things off of our priority list that are already on there to to accommodate that. I'd be comfortable that, that uh, knowing that the, the CARES Act dollars will have an expiration at the end of twenty twenty. But the bigger, I guess, discussion about do we want fiber, I think it's worth, even if it takes us longer into the, into the fourth quarter to schedule some of those to see what someone else might also offer or suggest or how they might structure it, like Google Fiber. If I could just add, as, as far as CARES Act qualifying money and qualifying programs go, You've got the expenditures, direct expenditures like PP&E, things like that. You've got the small business loans programs, which is right up there with it. I'm talking about surety of how, whether we know we'll be, we can use that money. Um, then you've got the, uh, the uh, police uh, salary and benefits that we talked about, that's pretty sure, but a little bit lower than those other two. And then you've got 
um, the utopia that Google Fiber is a CenturyLink, and that's that's down here. It's it's definitely dubious, and they won't commit to it themselves because they know that they can't. That they don't know either. So, but what I was hearing, Kate, was that maybe we we don't focus on the CARES Act side of right. hearing from Utopia and, uh, uh, sorry, Separate. from Google, but, but that we make sure we keep maybe later on in the year hearing from them and providing fiber to the home and keep that on the radar. Is yeah, that, that, did I hear that right? That's yeah. what I wanted. Yeah. Just, just, if, we're going to have that, if we're going to have a fiber to the home discussion, let's look at, you know, yep. everyone that could fit that, that uh, box. Any other Great. comments or Thanks. questions? If not, we'll look for a motion to 